another episode of Derek Speaks Volumes. This one's about discovering new music. And this is a podcast. If you found yourself here new, you might uh, have consumed some of my content on the internet. Hello, it is Derek G. This is my weekly podcast where I can speak to you guys, sometimes answer questions, sometimes talk about my life, sometimes talk about the theories and feelings I have about music. And this one is a particularly interesting topic that I get asked a lot about, which I guess I used to find surprising, but now I kind of, I can relate or understand it more. And I very, am very, very excited to talk about it with you. So this is about discovering new music specifically. And let's, let's start with the question, which is people asking me, how do you discover new music and i think that people ask me that for a variety of reasons some people want to go deeper into things some people are stuck in a rut some people just want to learn about my process as well so it's a bit of a a bit of a combination of, of all the things combination of the three reference to big brother and the holding company for those playing at home and i guess the thesis as i like to have a thesis for this is that discovering new music takes effort. Discovering new music needs to be intentional. Discovering new music is something that doesn't come to you. I think that's the thesis. New music does not come to you. And I think in many ways, it's a curse of getting older. It's a curse of life taking over. It's a curse of curiosity falling by the wayside. This is all sad, it's making me feel sad because for better or for worse, priorities get in the way. Health, well-being, financial constraints, home buying, child rearing, all that sort of stuff. And what happens is that, and I made a video about this on TikTok months and months and months ago about the, uh, the danger zone of people that are kind of mid twenties and older of getting stuck in your ways and being stuck in your own listening habits, which sucks. And I found myself there too. So the way I'm going to structure this is I'm going to break it down into three different types of pers people that are want to discover new music, a person stuck in the rut one, a person that is kind of enthusiastic and wants to learn more. And then three, the person that wants to really go deep diving subterranean and get a bit weird with it. So I want to cover all of that and give you some advice or my experiences with that. And then I'll have my little appendix at the end to talk about or fill you in on other things. So I think, yeah, that curse, right, is really about, I think for most people, the most important music that you experience in life and influences a lot of your life happens from, you know, 14 to 24. And sure, I could, I speak from personal experience, but I think that it's largely true because you have the time, you're a lot more obsessive over things, you're learning about the world and music is a huge identifier in your life that you are able to attach your personality to design your personality around, make friends based on this taste in music and is a really important part of your life at that point. And I think that there is no more important time. And sometimes that can be a bad thing because I think when I was, it's not a bad thing, but when I was in high school, probably the biggest influence on my life was Jack White and the White Stripes. And I don't listen to them now. I can appreciate it and I like it. And sometimes for nostalgia purposes, I listen to it, but I don't, particularly love it these days. And so it's that's definitely not a bad thing, but it's not like, I think for me, Jack White was a gateway into identifying with someone that had a, a clear view and vision and point of view on the world. And he had an interest in blues, he had an interest in, you know, old rock and, and he had an interest in uh, certain uh, ways of approaching making music that I was very intrigued by. And so I'm grateful for that, but I don't listen to that anymore. But I think that since, that age, you know, it becomes harder and harder to discover new music because uh, 
yeah, like I said, jobs and, and, and life gets in the way. And so your field of view definitely gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And like, sure, people can argue that music discovery is, is easier than ever. But I, I think that one thing that is lacking is taste making, which it was a radio thing back in the day. But then also the, the I think playlists and curated playlists and algorithmic playlists and editorial playlists by streaming platforms are not good generally, in my opinion. I don't think you, it, it commodifies music in a way that, uh, even on the radio, it used to be like, this is a great song and we're gonna play it all the time. And now it's like, hey, it's New Music Friday. Here's 200 songs that are out right now. And I'm not old man about this. I, I think everything moves forward and everything has its purpose, but it does mean that you just kind of press play and just music and art just washes over you and you kind of consume it as an entire entity as opposed to really going too deep with artists and so i get it i get why people find it hard to discover music it's because it's overwhelming because the the people that you it's harder to find people that you trust that you can find things from perhaps that's why you you, you asked me this question so the first person that is in this this the 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 levels of music discovery is one the first person is you are stuck in a rut you haven't discovered new music in a long time you listen find yourself listening to the same stuff you don't know where to start um you know that playlists are out there but you've had the same playlist forever and they're not exciting anymore you're not excited by music I feel that. And um, to share a personal story, I when I started my radio show, Fine Tooth Radio back in 2012, I was listening to a lot of Giles Peterson and and I definitely was like either like old school hip hop-ish, like all Joey Badass style or jazzy type things. And that was fun for me because it was still discovering new things. But then there was a point where I trap was really building and I was like this stuff sucks it all sounds the same it's not as good as like Joey Badass it's all mumble rap it's all lame and then I completely missed it and didn't listen to it until a certain point and I'm like wait there must be some good stuff here because it's so big and so I went back and then discovered it and then really got into it got excited by it and I kind of felt like an idiot for just going Oh, it all sounds the same because that's where I realized that I have had fallen to the trappings of like, I know better than where the culture is going and that nothing, nothing good is coming out anymore and, and music is going to hell, you know? So I get it. It happened to me, but I think that that's why perhaps I've now evolved to this point where I'm curious and hungry about everything because I was like, damn, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> for just completely disregarding a genre which has so much good in it because I just have I'm stuck in my ways so I, I feel being stuck in a rut and I would say that my advice to you if you are stuck in a rut listen in in not finding new music is to listen to albums I think that playlists are not the places you should be swimming in because it's it's just boring. It does, it's not taking you on a journey. It's not taking you anywhere. And I think it's not giving you a deeper connection to any artist. So what I would say is that if you have a handful of artists that if you, I'm sure you probably have a playlist, a running playlist of all your favorite songs you're listening to at the moment, I would be th going to those artists and then listening to an album and not just listening to it, try listening to it multiple times to really feel like form an opinion about it and go a bit deeper than just like this is a song that i like because probably more often than not you're going to like their discography but you don't really we're not trained to listen in that way anymore so we just choose our favorite two songs from the artist and then move on so i would say that that is uh the best place to start because it kind of you need to break a pattern a little bit in how you listen to music i think that we've been trained out of respecting the art form and trained into consuming on a more lean back basis. That is my first prescription, Dr. Derek. Maybe I should have that as a segment. The second thing is 
which I think is a really fun way to discover new music and, and interact with new music and be excited by music is, is delving into genres, uh, genres that you might not listen to, genres that maybe you've heard about that you haven't had the, the, the gateway to experience. So for example, I said this to someone on my live stream recently, they're like, I haven't listened to any new music since 2015 or something crazy like that. And I say to them, I said to them, why don't you check out Afrobeats? Because it has been a rising genre for the last 10 years. There's so much great music there. Like uh, uh, Jules is a great example. Is it called? Yes, Jules or Jules is my is one of my favorite examples. And or Burner Boy or so many examples but it's like i think why i said listen to afrobeats is because there's so much there that it's different from probably what this person listens to there's so many new artists it's a new sound it's a new rhythm it's a new energy and i feel like that is something that can really excite a person immediately because it's not just like oh derek i'm getting stuck with new music oh you should listen to burner boy it's like, okay, why don't you try a whole new, like the whole genre and try to just get excited by a whole new sound, aesthetic, vibe, look. And I feel like you're probably going to be playing it really loud because, you know, me, when you, I discover a new genre is, is, that's how I'm like. So, you know, if I throw a, bit, a few at you, I'm a piano, try that out, obviously new house genre from south africa of the last what three years maybe if you don't listen to that sort of music it's so great it's so great and you'll love it too try some cumbia try some shoegaze try some uk garage that it doesn't have to be from new music like you know from me is whatever is new to you so uk garage listen to dj ez or something like that and and really get into it i think that you are going to only benefit from diving deep into a subculture and a genre even like if you like it then read the wikipedia article about it this is how i like i'm getting excited by it and they go oh wow this is where the origins came from they call it shoegaze because they're always looking down looking at their effects pedals and their delay and stuff like that you almost become a new fan of this old genre i mean you you can also become a lifer of those genres later in life and i'm not saying you guys are old but you know, it, it, you, you didn't live through shoegaze, potentially. Maybe you did. And so pick it up now and run with it. And, and maybe that's your next obsession. So if you're a person that's just stuck in a rut, you'll go away from playlists, go to albums, or go to genres, genres that you don't know, genres from around the world. And I'm excited for you because I think that's a really exciting way to, to break it rather than just go oh listen to beast mode playlist because you're not going to find anything there because it's just what you expect you need to be surprised the second the second person in my list is someone that is probably the majority of my audience which is the curious the enthusiast the person that loves music as much as i but doesn't have a good sense of how to get started to go a little bit deeper, which is an interesting question because if you know music, you know where to find it. You know that there are curators on, on TikTok. You know, you can discover things on there. Maybe you discover things on the old Instagram story, but perhaps you want to develop your taste further. Taste is an interesting topic that I'd like to talk about one day. So that, I feel like is why people are mostly asking me that question. And I think a few words of advice first is you have to be optimistic. You have to be hopeful about music, the future of music, where it has been and where it's going. I think, like I said about my trap story, you have to respect it enough to know that music is always great and will always be great. And there's always good music coming out. It just might not be your taste right now or what you're used to right now. Take like Drain Gang, for instance. It's a whole different vibe if you if you grew up with old school hip hop. I think it's great, but it's different and you have to spend some time with it. 
my second piece, so the first piece of advice is be hopeful. Second is be intentional. You have to put in effort. You have to, music doesn't come to you as the thesis. And so you have to go putting in thought, energy, intention, effort. And if you aren't able to do that, then you will slowly start to fall out of love with new music. And so you have to, have to try and sometimes people, are, I don't want to do that, and that's fine. But then you, yeah, you don't, don't, you won't be discovering anything new anytime soon. My third bit of advice is be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Be willing to explore things that you don't immediately enjoy and live in that space a little bit. So that means for me, it's not like, oh, I don't like metal, so I've got to listen to metal. Like, <laughs> I don't really listen to metal as much as I can appreciate it. But I think it's more about being patient with either albums, being patient with mixes, being patient with, uh, okay, say you don't have to like everything. I tried the 1975 the other week, still don't get it or like it. But there's other things where I'm like, this album is really good, like the Trap example, and maybe I should check them out and listen and try and try again and you'll find something i think so you have to get out of your comfort zone and i think perhaps the fourth piece of advice for discovering new music is listen to your music loud listen to it as loud as you can without hurting your ears because i think that you can exp the experience of music totally shifts when it's pushed in the air at volume that it was intended because if you listen to it in the background in the corner Oh, I want to discover new music, but it's it's like basically background music. You will not feel it and you will not really understand the true intention behind it. And it will just wash over you and it will sound annoying or it will sound boring. So please, if there's one thing that you do to discover new music, listen to it loud. So much music almost transforms to a whole new thing when you listen to it loud. So that out of the way, here's my advice for you curious sorts, find tastemakers, find people that have an opinion on the world, find people that curate these things in a way that's not just a TikToker that says, if you like Smino, you'll like Dada. Like, I don't think that that is, I don't think that's curation. I think that's just recommending an artist. <laughs> I think to me, the curators that really shaped my life have been DJs, radio hosts, people that are building a world for you to live in. And my favorite tastemakers, DJs, are the ones that take you on a journey. So they'll start, like Eclair Fifi, I've always loved as a DJ, because often her radio shows start really ambient and by the end of it are really housey and in between there's folk and it takes you there. And it's like, and that's what I like to do too. I like to stitch together these artists that you go, okay, you might be expecting this from me, but before I get you there, I'm going to give you that. And Eclair Fifi, I don't know if she still does it, used to introduce me to some amazing folk songs, even though she's known as a house DJ. And I think that that opens your mind up, your brain, your 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 <laughs> third eye. I don't even know what that really means, but you know what I mean. Two other things. And I think that that has, I appreciate that so much. So find tastemakers. Where do you find them? You find them on internet radio, I think is, internet radio is where I live and, and breathe. And I think tastemakers, these people are the passionate people that are doing a lot of work for you to curate an experience that they're passionate about. And if they're passionate about it, then you'll connect with it. Examples, obviously NTS Radio, Dub Lab, um, Balami, Nudes. Uh, there's one Reform Radio up in Manchester. The, the list could go on La Mentiga in Brazil. I want to say Soul Community Radio, Berlin Community Radio, Red Light Radio, Refuge Radio. There's so many. And I listen to all of them. And how you find these people is you you kind of press play on the people that look interesting, the cover art looks interesting, and then you won't like a lot of it and you'll give it 10 minutes. You're like, meh, this is not my style. You go on to the next. And then you find someone. Then you find someone and you're like, ooh, 
this is my jam. And then you listen to everyone at their shows and then you're in and then you're in deep. And I've been there and I've done that. And I, hopefully my radio shows and my DJ sets can uh, provide that for you. Same with DJs. You'll find them probably through radio shows. They do guest DJ slots, slots, <laughs> slots. And then you can develop out a relationship with them. And then you can find their sets on SoundCloud and things like that. And SoundCloud, MixCloud, the obvious places, YouTube to an extent, Boiler Room to an extent find, where, is where you find these people. Again, I couldn't necessarily give you uh, the people that you should be listening to, but there's there's people that I like, whether it's Chloe, Chloe Robinson or Huni or Jamie Tiller or uh, what's his name? Boofy Man, Wolf, Wolf Muller. Lots of people out there. I've even like listened to like Claro's old mixes. I think she's got really good taste. It's the combination of putting music together in long form that I think really opens you up to new music. And if you're curious, that's the best way to do it. I, I could also say blogs are good, but blogs are pretty irrelevant. And our blogs are also so long form that perhaps doesn't give you that same experience. These days you really want to read the articles and listen to the MP3s and does feel very old school. Uh, the last thing I'd say for curious people is find curated playlists by yeah, record labels, institutions, individuals that you particularly respect. Me, me. But also people like Excel or Warp have playlists, tasteful things, you know, boo, you know, some publications, whether it's Paper Mag or Colors might put you on, they have like a weekly playlist. It can get a bit generic at times so be wary of it but i think there are some i go to the xl one every so often just because they have like okay this is what's on the fringes of what we're interested in and it might not be super underground but it's more underground than i have the time to explore these days uh lastly with internet radio obviously these people have like they're connected to scenes and so they'll introduce you to people that have barely put out any music and then you're like oh I'm, I'm in on this journey really early so that is the second person i think i've covered all of it the third person and i think this is the smallest or like no actually the second biggest percentage of people that follow me is the obsessive not the curious but the obsessive and the person that wants to go even deeper than dj sets and you really want to discover stuff and have almost like a war chest, a vault of stuff that you want to, you know, collect and obsess over. And you want to go to Discogs, you want to go on SoulSeek, you want to go in all these places to download, buy records, music, and have a, a, a obsessed relationship with music. I don't know many people like that uh, in my personal life outside of people that I've met through music and DJing and radio in particular. I know a lot of people in that world, but like if I talk about family, friends, people I grew up with, I'd know zero people like that. Most people are in between one and two, kind of listen to the same stuff or kind of like keeping up with things loosely and every so often listen to an NTS show. So the people on the other end, people like me, what could I say to you? I think that you have to do something. If you are a person that wants to, is a music obsessive and wants to go as deep as possible, it's, it goes beyond being intentional. You have to do something about that passion because that's the only way that you can get to the kind of deepest subterranean levels of music love engagement. In some sense, that's making music, and that's nice. That's not who I am, though. For me, I think that means collecting to an extent. I think that means DJing to an extent. I think that means radio to an extent, playlists to an extent, because you want to find the weirdest people that are obsessed with the weirdest music. Go to a community radio, listen to a community radio station at 2 a.m., I used to do that. Who's there? I used to be on this station in Sydney called Eastside Radio. Not cool at all. It was just a community radio station. And they gave me the graveyard shift. I don't know if anyone was listening because it's not a mainstream station. So it's not really heavily promoted outside a small area of Sydney. But I was there giving a damn about 
curating two hours of music that I had found that I wanted to share with the world, you know? So the weird people live there because who's doing that? Who's doing that for absolutely nobody or almost nobody for two people, the people that want to discover, curate and present music to the world. And I think that's almost like giving back. It's almost like contributing. If you're not a musician and you're not in a record label, and most a lot most people in the record labels don't really love music like that. They kind of just want to be in music because they want to look cool. I know throwing shade, but we all know people like that. So if you're really, really obsessed, you want to share it. And so I would recommend doing something like that because I think what helped me and my knowledge, broad knowledge of music is putting out a radio show every week for nobody to listen to and really keeping up to, to, up to date with movements in culture, trends, genres, sounds, commentary, releases, and then knowing enough about it because I just absorbed enough about it every week, every day. Every time I could listen to music, I did, whether it's commuting, on the bike, at the gym, I was always listening to stuff I didn't like in order to find the songs, the hidden gems that I could present on a radio show to no one. <laughs> That's how obsessed you are. And it, so once you're there, right? And once you, you, and I think it helped to have that regimen, right? Of turning up, finding music, curating it. So I'm always on and listening. You start to develop relationships blogs find different places you have your corners of the internet or people that can present you music that no one else knows about so that's why djs have a whole raft of demos from artists that they've built relationships with unreleased music that they can present to the world remixes you can find those on soundcloud you can find deep stuff on soundcloud that's really good that no one listens to that's why they have stuff that's not on spotify because they're not looking on spotify and they are Again, on Discogs, they're finding stuff, hidden gems in DJ mixes or radio shows and then buying those things. And they are presenting that and you won't be able to find that anywhere. anywhere. And I have a list, ongoing list of songs, MP3s that I have ripped from places of songs that I still cannot find to this day. And every year I will continue looking for them. So what does that mean? I'll find it in a boiler room. I'll find it like I'll hear it somewhere and I'll record it. And you'll try to, you'll try to Shazam it and nothing comes up. And then you'll try to type in the lyrics and nothing comes up. You'll try to figure out what the name is and nothing comes up and you need to find it. And I have some MP3s that I've just labeled question marks because I have no idea what it is, but I'm obsessed with it. And one day I'll find it. And that's how obsessed I am about finding it. It doesn't matter in some ways that I haven't found it because I have a copy of it, but it's not the copy of it and it's not the best copy of it. So uh, that's where I live. And, uh, and I found that recently. I, I listened to someone's mix. I was like, oh, this song's crazy. And then Shazammed it. Nothing. Like I said, tried to feel, I couldn't understand the lyrics. It was in English, but I couldn't understand what they're saying. So I was trying to like decipher and then ended up Googling to an extent to the point where I, I found the song, but it was, a, it was the original song, the, not, the, not the version, because the version I heard was a cover. And then I went on to Discogs and then I went, went through like trying to find the, the people that had covered that song. And then I ended up finding the song that was named something slightly differently and then i uh well i intend to buy it but then i found it on soul seek and then i now have a copy of it you know so it's it it's it's really like you are kind of hell-bent on finding that connection that that no one else really cares about and maybe i'll share that song with you one day if i if i remember it i'll put it in the show notes and uh but it's not on youtube right? So you'll have to go find it for yourself. So that's where if you're that deep, it is finding connections that no one else does, finding demos, finding like going through the absolute muck of it all to find stuff that you will obsess over for a long time and, and then share it with other people. And I think the sharing is part of it because you are then contributing back to the community of music obsessed people. So 
as you can tell, as I round up this, this podcast, music, the game, discovering music does not come to you. You have to give an intention, give a, 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 a reason to exist in the world of, 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 as a music fan and then go after it and find it and enjoy it and be passionate about that journey of listening to stuff that you might not like in order to discover your brand new thing. The people I admire most in music are people that never lose the love for new music. So Charles Peterson, whether it's John Peel, uh, whether it's Richie Sakamoto or Tom York or Björk, people that still are like out there looking, searching, finding and enjoying new music. And I hope to and want to be someone like that because it's exciting. New music is exciting. And I, I think it takes you back to being young when you discover new music because it's like it gives you energy to search and continue to, to, to discover newness in the world. I'm an optimist. I, I believe a lot in, in, in the beauty and power of youth, newness, and, and change. Can you guess how I vote? <laughs> that is the end of the podcast for today. And hope, good luck, and enjoy your music discovery journey, whatever phase you are in. The appendix, I feel like depending on the week, is fairly short. I would like to acknowledge my Instagram followers. Yes, you. The ones that have discovered me on Instagram perhaps have found my podcast. Because on my first podcast, I was a bit... I was a bit facetious because I had built my content and following on TikTok and I have a, quite an affinity to TikTok. Um, I consider myself a TikToker in that sense. And then Instagram was like, whatever, not Instagram, my reels, no one cared about my reels. I was like, screw Instagram, Instagram sucks. Reels suck. Not that pe people don't suck, but I was like, Instagram sucks. And then all of a sudden it started to pop off my Instagram reels. TikToks and I on my first podcast I was like ha ha well the people that watch it on TikTok on Instagram they're just enjoying six month old TikToks ha ha and now I kind of regret saying that because <laughs> a lot of people enjoy my videos and it's not your fault that it I it, the algorithm if you will on Instagram has discovered that my content is of high enough quality and so now you're enjoying it. And I'm like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you've discovered it late. It's not your fault. So I, I appreciate you and thank you for watching, listening, enjoying my content. And I very much respect Instagram now, he says, after growing tremendously quickly uh, and, and try, cap in hand, walking back the statement. Thank you. I am getting to the point where there's always almost going to be parity of the content coming out at the same time on each platform, almost parity of followership as well. So, which is hyper insane to me. So love, respect. I apologize <laughs> as well. And lastly, I think that I have maybe sticking with Instagram people, I apologize if I don't respond to you that much on Instagram because this is like real inside baseball comments. But I have learned through my experience on Instagram that the, the here, let me give you a live example, that Instagram feeds more of negativity than TikTok. And the live example is my post disco video whereby it, we got like 70,000 views within a few hours. And I was like, wow, this is a successful video. People are clearly loving it. It's going to get hundreds of thousands of views. And because it's very passionate to me and I think I presented it well. I also knew that people were, might have issue with what call post disco. I covered this on another podcast, but because it, it's known as many other things. But I went via the what the Wikipedia article said. Anyway, so... The comments were people saying, uh, it wasn't called that, it's not called that, you know, there's validity to that and people thinking, oh, this guy doesn't know anything. And I didn't grow up during that time, the, the mid 80s and, 
and knowing what it was called at the time. I'm going, I discovered it much later and, and it was introduced to me as that genre. And yeah, I thought I acknowledged it enough. Anyway, TikTok recognized that the sentiment of that uh, video was not positive. Maybe, I think largely it was positive, but I'd say 20% negative. And I went, you know what? I don't think this is a, a video that we should share too, too, too wide. So it just hit 70,000 and stopped. And I think it's it's like gotten like a few thousand views over the course of the next month, which is surprising. It doesn't happen like that, but clearly it knew. I posted on Instagram and similar sentiment, 20% negative, 80% positive. But Instagram is like, great, this is probably a bit controversial. There's some discussion here. We're going to push it and has about half a million views on Instagram. And I can't check those comments because insanely racist things have been said in, said in there. Insane things about pe me being ignorant. You know, like, look, I, I, I didn't grow up um, in and around black culture in the 80s. And so I think the, the overarching criticism was, you know, it was called R&B and don't change it. And it's not yours. And look. Again, I don't need to qualify. Um, I stand by what I made. But insanely racist things said. And and therefore, I, I've chosen to not interact as much on Instagram, sadly, because of what it what it chooses to present and what it how it chooses to prioritize its or filter its content or, or propagate its content, which is a bummer to me. But I have to be careful because I find checking the comments of Instagram quite upsetting, quite literally upsetting to my mental health, to my, I've got to be protective of how I interact with the internet. And um, I believe I am doing positive work that is about sharing, about putting people onto music, about positivity. And if I, I'm always going to mess up certain things. I, I think everyone does but not to the extent where I'm actually doing anything horrible. It's not my spirit. I'm not trying to be controversial at all. I just want to share my love for things that I think that people will like. So I apologize to any Instagram uh, commenters out there, but it's just the nature of the beast. But I'm glad that you're enjoying the content and I'm glad that you're engaged and thank you for your comments nonetheless. I, sometimes I'll check it, but rarely. That's the appendix, emotional. Until next week, that has been fun. Enjoy your journey of discovering music. Hopefully I'm part of that ride for you. And I'll see you next week. Next week's volumes, over and out.